Hello world, I'm Max Patton, and this is Dreaming Polygons, the podcast that explores the games industry by interviewing the ambitious dreamers and creators who are shaping its future, one polygon at a time. For today's episode, we will look at the Nintendo Switch, the hottest console in town right now, and what it's like to make games for from the perspective of an indie dev. Our guest is indie and industry veteran Dave Lloyd, who, with the help of one other person in his small studio Powerhoof, has made Crawl a multiplayer dungeon crawler where you and your friends take turns playing the monsters and the hero. We'll talk to Dave about how he ported his game from PC and consoles to the Switch and what that experience was like. Hey everyone, I'm here with uh, Dave Lloyd of Powerhoof, who makes Crawl. And so first of all, let's talk about uh, your experience. So for those listening, how did you get started in this industry and uh, what led you to start a studio of two making the game Crawl? Um, well, going back about 10 years or a bit more, um, I was studying computer science and at the same time was kind of doing a bit of game development as a hobby on the side, um, making little adventure games with Adventure Game Studio. And, um, and I kind of thought it'd be cool to make games. I really liked doing it as a hobby, but didn't think it'd be a real thing I could do as a career. Um, but then finished, finished up my course and, um, I thought I'd probably end up doing a bit of website stuff, um, but I I went for a couple of game jobs and I got one uh, in a little game studio in Melbourne um, called Red Tribe. And so, yeah, I got my foot in the door there and it was a bit of a ramshackle studio, but uh, we learnt a lot at that um, working there just because there was no, there was no real project leads or designers that knew what they were doing. So we kind of had to, uh, had to kind of, work all that stuff out ourselves and, and realize, oh no, no one else is going to make this game good. We've got to kind of do it ourselves, you know? Um, uh, so that was a really good experience. And that's actually where I met Barney, who's the other half of Powerhoof. Um, and yeah, so we're in the same boat thrown in the deep end, um, as junior, um, programmers and artists. Uh, and so that company, uh, kind of fell apart when the global financial crisis hit and all the companies in Melbourne that were depending on overseas contracts from the US. Uh, suddenly those contracts dried up because the Australian dollar was not as good compared to the US dollar anymore. So uh, those companies just fell apart and me and Barney went our separate ways and well, we still hung out as friends, but um, we worked at different companies. So I got a job at, at Feynman who did real racing, flight control. So kind of iPhone games and Barney got a job at Iron Monkey who was owned by EA. And they were also doing iPhone games. And then eventually EA bought out uh, Firemint and merged them two companies together as Fire Monkeys. And so we're working together again. And so, yeah, stayed there for a few more years doing iPhone stuff. But it was when all the freemium stuff was coming up and we weren't huge fans of that kind of thing. So I uh, eventually decided to um, try out hands being indies and um, making our own kind of stuff and quit and started Powerhoof, which was about four, four and a half years ago. Crawl really does seem like the perfect game for Switch. It has a simple graphical style um, that the console, you know, can run. The emphasis on streamlined fun. It has local multiplayer. Was that your line of thinking in deciding, you know, to port it to Switch? Yeah, um, like when we first heard about Switch, it sounded, it sounded like well, you know the first video. It had people t- picking up the Switch and taking it to their friend's rooftop party and and sort of all crowding around and playing a game um, together, which is you know perfect for crawl. It's all about local multiplayer and sitting on a couch with friends and playing it together in front of a TV or in front of a screen, shared screen. Um, so yeah, so like that that looked perfect. But then yeah, it's Nintendo and and they they sort of historically been a bit family friendly and we didn't and and also kind of hard to to get in on i guess and so I, we kind of discounted discounted it earlier on um and thought it's had be nice but it's probably unlikely that we we'd get to do do um something with nintendo and but then yeah later on that they sort of we got um a couple of contacts us from nintendo sort of asking us if we we're interested um and then it actually f- realized oh yeah actually they're being really open and um and they've got a really nice system for people to to come in and and like start developing like relatively easily uh so 
yeah, it was really surprising. And um, yeah, if anything, I wish I'd, I'd sort of been more aggressive earlier on and going, ah, oh, we really should try and do this um, because it was a lot easier um, once we started to, than I expected it to be. Yeah. Yeah. And I was surprised too, you know, when I heard that Nintendo was themselves reaching out to independent developers, because that's so, you know, unlike Nintendo, or at least what we used to think of Nintendo as back, uh, I guess, before the Switch, because it used to be that, you know, you had some stuff on the eShop that wasn't like from big publishers, but there wasn't a lot of it. And the idea, the idea that they would just come up to you and, uh, you know, get in contact, that is um, pretty radical, I think. Yeah, um, I think, I guess after the Wii U as well, we were a bit tentative at first. I think a lot of developers probably were because um, the, it sort of seemed like it was a bit of a smaller console and, and it's, you know, it takes a lot of work to, to port. And so you don't want to you don't want to do it if you think the console might not make enough sales to be worth it. I guess part of it was when I got a Switch and realized, ah, oh, there's actually not much on the storefront. It's um, There's a lot of space here um, compared to other platforms. It sort of made it clear, yeah, this is <laughs> this would be awesome. Yeah, and then it started selling really well. And so now there's actually a big audience and yeah, that, yeah. Uh, that's still hungry for games. So it's like the perfect platform. And so what was it like porting at a technical level? Because, uh, you know, you had the game on PC, you had it on Xbox. Um, the consensus from many devs seems to suggest that it's a lot more welcoming than Nintendo's previous consoles, but it's still running, you know, like a custom NVIDIA chip. It's a, it's, it's a pretty different uh, hardware, I imagine. Uh, what was that like to port for? That was super easy, yeah. We're using Unity, so most of the groundwork had been done. Um, is a bit like don't have to worry about graphic stuff except for maybe tweaking a couple of shaders. Um, yeah, the experience was pretty pretty smooth. Like there wasn't any hitches really. Like we because we'd ported to other platforms, we'd kind of done the major things you need to do um, compared to just being on PC. So mm-hmm. yeah, it was it was a, it was basically a breeze <laughs> compared to what I expected. Um, That's yeah, nice. No complaints at all, really. Yeah, I guess it's because of the success of the Switch that, you know, the Unreal and uh, Unity have made their engines widely available uh, for it because I think it's a huge asset for independent developers like yourself. Yeah, it's fantastic. Um, the, the porting stuff wasn't really a huge consideration when I decided to use Unity. It was more like, oh, I just want to be able to have not have to worry about doing all the engine code and just be able to sort of concentrate on making the games. But... Oh yeah, but having it there and being able to decide, oh, actually, maybe we could try putting this on this platform, and, and just being able to super easily put it on uh, just Mac and Linux as well as PC, as well as Windows, is is just a really great benefit that now I'd really miss if we didn't have it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's kind of one of the interesting things about Unity is that there is that uh, conception nowadays that a negative conception people have because it makes it so easy, and there's a lot of people who abuse it. You know, they sell pre-made assets. Uh, is games or do things like that they just make very bad games Uh, or sometimes people are just making their first game in unity and it's rough around the edges but as with crawl you know um that's absolutely not the case and i think there's a lot of examples of that even in the triple a industry you look at a game like hearthstone that was i think initially built off unity which many people won't believe when you tell them that uh it's kind of amazing how how things how much more accessible in general i think development is would you agree with that yeah, it gets a bit of a bad name, and I probably wouldn't. Um, I probably wouldn't. Like, I think that's why you tend not to have the Unity splash screen if you can help it, because people right. like, see that as a a bit of a mark of like, oh, this is a bit of a, a kind of fast, just someone just getting a game out really quickly. Um, but yeah, it's a it's a pity that that stigma's there because I think it's 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 a great great engine. Like, it's it can do just as much just just as good games as any other engine, really. Um, and when it comes to the, you know, the Switch as a platform, uh, you released Crawl in December, right? Yeah, yeah, just before Christmas. <laughs> right, yeah, good timing. Uh, has the Switch, you know, do you think it's expanded your audience uh, or do you think you're reaching a new one? How has it done for your game? It's been really, like, sales have been great. It's really hard to tell. I, I it's, it's hard to tell how people find the game. So for the first week or, or less than a week even, um, it was on the new releases page on the actual uh, console, but then it's dropped off that and people are still managing to find it and, and buy it. Um, and we didn't see a huge sharp decline in sales on the day that it was no longer on the um, new releases page. So people are finding it somehow. I think there's there's definitely a lot more people who would buy it 
for the second time on Switch compared to other consoles, just because if they liked it or played it on, a bit on PC, or even if they bought it and never played it on PC, but kind of knew what it was because they'd bought it, they'd, they'd like go, oh, this would actually be really good to take to my mate's house on my Switch and, and play there. Um, because it's so hard to get people around your PC a lot of the time. Even if you think, even if you like that idea, you like you really like you want to play local multiplayer things with friends. Um, it's it's a logistical hassle, you know, <laughs> to try and get people to crowd around a PC or drag your PC into your living room. Um, so yeah, I think we would we do get a lot of people buy it for the second time. Um, but I mean, it's, it's impossible to tell really. We don't have any metrics on where the people who buy it are coming from or anything. Um, so yeah, it's actually it's a bit of a mystery to us. Uh, how people are finding the game on there without you know, just searching for the, the name of the game. Oh, you know, we, we had a, a good launch and stuff. Like we were happy with the, Mark Barney made an awesome trailer and um, we got a lot of nice reviews and things like that. Um, but historically that hasn't made a huge difference in the sales. The number one thing has always been visibility on the storefront. So if we get, if we're on the front page of Steam for like a few hours, we'll see a huge spike in sales. And as soon as we drop off the the front page that people see, it just goes back down to the normal kind of tail. Um, so yeah, I don't know. It's very, it's, it's, it's strange. And I don't really have an answer. It is strange because on Steam, interestingly enough, the way I found out about Crawl was I saw it on the uh, recommended for you thing, you know, because Valve does all of this uh, automation, you know, uh, in their curating process and all of this um, algorithms and all this stuff. I don't think Nintendo is doing quite as much of that, uh, to be honest, though. Maybe maybe I'm wrong, but I look on the eShop and it's a pretty simplistic experience, you know, for for, for both positive and, go- and bad. But the good thing about that is, unlike uh, the App Store or Google Play, uh, you know, the mobile stores, it's not flooded with crap, you know, like there's a few, there's a healthy amount of games on there and the, I'd say 90% of them are really good. So I scroll down, you know, on the eShop and I almost look at everything in the page because it's just, it's all kind of interesting. And I think that's one of the really good things about the Switch audience is at least the people who have the console right now. Uh, seem like the kind of audience who, you know, like me, is going to look at the eShop and look at all those games, even if they're not, you know, the first three or four top featured games. Yeah, it's a really interesting collection. It'll be interesting to see how it goes. I think it's already ramping up. There's a lot more games dropping every week than there was even a month or two ago. Um, so I, I imagine at some point they're going to do some stuff about uh, visibility of games that aren't just new releases in top 10. Um because it's going to get harder to find a game which is, you know, released a month ago. Um, but, yeah, we'll have to see how it goes, I guess. Steam's, yeah, this thing, Steam's, all Steam's metrics and, and stuff for recommending games has worked really well for us. Like we've, we've always had a, a good um, Steam review score, which I think helps. And because it's a kind of niche game, people who who have played other local multiplayer games are likely to sort of see it pop up in their feed and, and have a look at our page. And so I think that's that's how we've kind of been relatively, you know, we've been very successful, you know, for a two man team, especially on on Steam. Is just like people randomly find our game um, in that in that way. And so it's yeah, it's interesting to see, like, because I, I just imagine that it can't really work the same on something like Switch, where they don't have any of those metrics. Like, how would people actually know to go and search the store for the game called Crawl? Um, how, I mean, our marketing reach, we we do what we can what we can on social media and stuff, but it's tiny compared to, uh, you know, a, a proper game studio that has a marketing budget and things like that. So, um, yeah, there's no kind of, yeah, it's hard to know how people will find our game organically. But so far, like the, it's so far it's still selling despite not being on the front page. So, mm-hmm. who knows? <laughs> I guess, yeah, my idea is it's the kind of game where it seems like, you know, I bring it over to a friend's house and we play it. And then my friend has a Switch or gets a Switch later. And he's going to remember that experience we had, you know, playing together. He's going to be like, hey, I should get this too. Because it seems like the kind of game where it can very naturally be shared as an experience, uh, which extends itself to, you know, more people buying the game, I think. Yeah, yeah, true. So for other developers, uh, you know, other indies, what do you think they can take from uh, your success on Switch? And uh, do you think that every game should be on Switch? Um, if it fits the the platform, yeah, definitely. I think it's very flexible um, as a platform. It's got you know, it's got a touch screen. It's got um, you know, proper controllers. So it kind of it can can do a lot. It's not like iPhone where there's certain games that just wouldn't really work. You, you know, unless you you have virtual 
controls and stuff, which don't, mm-hmm. which are never really very good. Um, uh, and then you've, and on iPhone, you've always got to kind of adjust your payment model or whatever to, mm-hmm. to match the audience because people don't, don't expect to pay 10 bucks. Um, yeah, no, I mean, that's, I, there's no real downside I can see. Um, it's, you know, it's a bit of work to port and, you know, any console is, is harder to get on than it is for PC or, or like iPhone or whatever, because you, it's not all self, you don't just go to the website and put in your details and then the next day you're selling the game. Mm-hmm. You, um, you've got to email back and forth a lot and organize a lot of things and do all these TRCs and get your game tested and um, go through ratings boards and all this fiddly <laughs> producer kind of stuff. But um, our experience has been great, yeah. Yeah, and it, it's it's interesting you brought up, you know, that um, all the Switch's capabilities because in my mind, actually, I kind of view the Switch as quite limited, at least from a hardware perspective, because it's obvious that it's not as powerful as other consoles. And uh, funnily enough, I don't think it's as powerful as most phones or tablets, at least, you know, the ones that Apple and uh, Samsung, you know, the top tier ones are making, just because it's, you know, it's it's a console, right? But it's well designed, and that's really what separates it. But in, in one sense, like, it kind of makes me sad, because I think of, you know, the early years of mobile gaming, uh, and you mentioned, you know, stuff like Real Racing, Dead Space, those were really, I think, innovative breakthrough games that, like, you know, push the hardware to its limit, and... I can only imagine if stuff like that, you know, was still being made today. But unfortunately, it's a lot of, um, as you said, you know, free to play stuff. Do you think that Switch is kind of that mobile has passed the torch to Switch when it comes to premium experiences as a whole, or do you think there's still hope for uh, mobile games? Uh, I don't. I don't know. I don't. I don't really consider the Switch a mobile platform in the same way. Like, it's. The the def, the defining thing about mobile is everyone has one and they're always it's always in your pocket. Whereas a switch, you're only going to take it somewhere if you want to play games. Um, so it's kind of a different mentality for people who are playing the games. They're not just like, oh, I've got a few minutes and I'm standing at a bus stop, so I'll play whatever's on my phone. It's like, I oh, know I've I've brought this because I want to play a specific game. It's not yeah, it's not just something you kind of do as idly. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure. I think I mean with, with the performance stuff for most indies it's not it's like they're not going to be competing with triple a um so they're not really going for like the the best fanciest graphics that are the most modern and and stuff so that's mm-hmm. more a problem for triple a because triple a wants to compete on like we have better graphics than any other game um right whereas for indie you're like we just have you want to be different you want to stand out and have a hook so mm-hmm. um and the, you can't afford to compete with the triple a stuff so um yeah. So it's not so much of a problem. Um, but yeah, it's interesting. And Nintendo's always kind of tried to avoid being part of the like competition with uh, Sony and, and Microsoft, at least, you know, the last few generations of consoles since the Wii. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it's probably a good strategy for them because... Historically, yeah, it usually has been an advantage. Obviously, there's exceptions like the Wii U, but uh, when mm-hmm. they get it right, they seem to get it right pretty well. So... Looking towards the future, where do you think, uh, you know, Powerhoof as a studio is going to go? Are you guys going to expand Crawl more or do you consider that complete, feature complete? Uh, are you going to make a new game? What do you think you're going to do in the next, you know, few years? Taking a break from Crawl, at least for, for a while, just because we were sort of did um, four years on early access and, and we're like, yeah. oh, maybe we'll take a break from updates. We were, you know, we were kind of planning on on doing more updates earlier, but um, but I think we're, we're going to focus on some new stuff so regular human basketball which you uh, mentioned earlier where i'm gonna do some updates to that and put that out on steam hopefully in a few months um which has been fun and um what else yeah so then we're we're kind of going back to game jamming and prototyping lots of little things uh which is something we wanted to do when we first started out uh just keep keep doing that a lot uh keep exploring new new different things so um some more single player oriented stuff and I'm really interested in doing more story-driven game stuff as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and we 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 never really wanted to be a company that had a success and then decide and then because we were able to uh, just used all that income to just grow and become a bigger company and get a bigger or flashier office or anything like that. We we always just wanted to sort of be um, be able to like make enough money that we can keep making games ourselves and. And I think if we did grow and took on more people or anything like that, it'd be just so we can do a few more smaller games as opposed to making bigger, better games. 
oh, hopefully better, but not bigger. <laughs> right. Yeah, so um, that's just something that that's uh, like I've I always enjoyed making games where I get to have my finger in all the different parts of development. So I get to do bits mm-hmm. of audio and bits of you know writing and design and programming and and little bits of art as well. So um, when I've worked at big bigger companies on bigger games, and you just get to do the you get to do the AI programming, and that's it. You don't do anything else. It's it's not quite as not 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 what I like the most about game development. So mm-hmm. yeah, hopefully we'll we'll keep um just keep making lots of little weird interesting things. I think that's the the idea at the moment. But at the moment we're still kind of it's still a bit up in the air. We don't really don't really know what's what's on the cards next. At least after regular human basketball. Yeah. Well, it's good that uh you know uh crawl and regular human basketball have you know brought you success and that uh looks like you're able to stay indie and i wish you guys luck with your future endeavors thanks you can follow power hoof and dave on twitter for updates on their future endeavors links in the description that's it for now i hope you enjoyed this episode if you did feel free to rate us an apple podcast or leave a like on youtube you can subscribe to us in most podcasts apps and on youtube as well There's also Twitter, which you will want to follow to stay updated on new episodes of the show. Our Twitter is at PolygonsFM. Everything will be linked in the description. Thanks so much for listening to our second episode, and I will see you with new guests next time. Until then, goodbye world.